Every once in a while, we get something different, something special, something that wasn't designed by committee to please shareholders, something that has no business existing other than to see that it's possible. A symphony of power, precision, and untamed ambition. And although it's anything but perfect, that's exactly what Mercedes-AMG has given us with the AMG One. A couple of days ago, the AMG One set a new lap record at the Nürburgring completing the 12 mile lap in only 6 minutes and 29 seconds. This is 6 seconds faster than the previous record which was set by the Mercedes AMG One. When asked why try to beat your own record, the AMG CEO effectively responded with, because we can. There is a lot that we could talk about with this car, like how it isn't street legal in the United States, how it has its own DRS system, how it has a 122 horsepower motor just for the turbo, how only 275 are being built at 2 million a piece. But obviously the most interesting talking point and the whole purpose of this video, the whole purpose of the car really, is the engine. The AMG One doesn't have the fastest acceleration, it doesn't have the highest top speed, it's pretty heavy at 1700 kilograms compared to other cars in this category like the T50 or the Valkyrie, but none of that matters. This is a road legal car that has an F1 engine that AMG did not need to make but did anyway. They made a thousand horsepower hypercar the hardest way that they knew how for no other reason than to just prove it could be done, and that's what's so cool about it. The AMG One features a 1.6 liter V6, specifically the same one ran by Mercedes in the W08 during the 2017 Formula 1 Championship. Formula 1 engines are supremely difficult to build and maintain. They are incredibly complicated machines that cost tens of millions of dollars and have pushed material science and the imaginations of engineers to the limit for decades. They need to be as light as possible, be as compact as possible, burn as little fuel as possible, and somehow at the same time make as much power as possible. F1 engines are built to such tight tolerances that the pistons are actually seized when the engine is cold. Mechanics have to pump hot oil and coolant throughout the engine to loosen everything up enough to allow the pistons to move within the cylinders. Once the engine is up to temp, they have to use a giant impact gun to actually get the thing to turn over. They are up to over 15,000 RPM and feature systems such as pneumatic valve trains and split turbo designs, not to mention the incredibly complex fuel injection systems, intake systems, cooling systems, or how they would never be able to meet modern environmental standards. And let's not forget the hybrid component of a modern F1 powertrain is absurdly complicated and expensive. The idea of running one of these on the street is just ridiculous because there's a lot of ways to make a thousand horsepower reliably, and a tiny Formula One derived V6 is probably the worst way of doing it. But Mercedes-AMG have done just that, and it was anything but easy. People lucky enough to have ordered one have only recently started taking delivery, and Mercedes have been working on this project since 2017 when they unveiled the initial concept for the car at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Obviously the biggest problem here is reliability. These engines are made to make as much power as possible, not last for 100,000 miles. And the more you turn that crank, the less reliable your engine is going to be. Just look at top fuel engines. They can make 11,000 horsepower, but need to be rebuilt after every couple of seconds. Literally. You can't build your engine to be as light as possible in a production setting because that would make it less reliable. You can't have a red line of over 15,000 RPM and have an idle limit of over 5,000 RPM because that would make it less reliable. Not to mention it would be way too loud and too inefficient. Not to mention that the modern Formula 1 V6 just 10 years ago could barely finish a race without grenading. Even Mercedes, who were the only ones to hit the mark with the V6 hybrids in 2014, didn't exactly have high expectations. A month before the first race of the 2014 season at a shakedown test in Portugal, Mercedes were only able to get one car to go half a lap the entire day because they just couldn't get the engine to work. Today, 10 years later, they're able to take that same technology and get it to work in a road car, and it can theoretically last for tens of thousands of miles. So how did Mercedes-AMG, I'm, I'm just going to keep calling them Mercedes, do this? Blend high performance and high efficiency while meeting street legal standards for the emissions, noise regulations, and safety, along with being reliable enough to run laps on the track or go down to the city. The first thing they needed to do was sort out the reliability problems. In order to increase lifespan, one of the things that they had to do was reduce the compression ratio, and they also had to take the crankcase and beef it up a bit so that it wasn't so fragile. They also had to reduce the red line from 15,000 down to 11,000 RPM and reduce the idle down to a much more reasonable 1,200 RPM, because you can't be sitting in traffic idling at 5,000 RPM like a Formula 1 car does at the starting line. After this, their next challenge was particulate emissions. Despite what Liberty Media wants you to believe, a Formula 1 engine produces very high emissions without a catalyst and filter. Mercedes were able to optimize combustion with a high charge motion in the cylinder along with in-cylinder vaporization. Charge motion is the motion of the air-fuel mixture in a combustion chamber that's generated by the combustion chamber's geometry. It's basically how turbulent the air-fuel mixture is, and it can have a big effect on things like thermal efficiency. They also added a second port fuel injection system to go along with the direct 
injection system used in F1 and the latest in filter and catalyst technology in order to reach the current emission standards to be street legal. And speaking of regulations, in order to achieve certain noise and vibration levels, small changes also had to be made to the gear train between the crankshaft and the camshaft, as well as various covers that had to be placed around the engine block to try and make the thing as quiet as possible. But you can only do so much with noise, this is still a Formula 1 engine. And while they were able to get noise levels down to a more appropriate level on the outside of the car, it's still ferociously loud on the inside. Not like I would know, I'm just going off what other people have said. Most of these changes, the lower compression, the secondary fuel injection system, the lower red line, the introduction of a catalytic converter, do lower the power output of the engine slightly, but they're changes that needed to be made in order to meet reliability and emissions or noise requirements. But there were also some critical elements that did remain the same to the engine's F1 counterparts. I mentioned earlier that Formula One engines have pneumatic valve trains. Well, that's a feature that they were able to carry over to the AMG1, and it's the first road car ever to feature them. They allow the engine to run at extremely high RPMs by allowing faster retraction of the valves. They reduce stress on the components of the valve train and are much lighter than mechanical springs. The AMG1 is also the first road car to feature an electric turbo. In Formula 1, this is known as the MGU-H. And it was Mercedes themselves who pioneered this technology when the V6 hybrids were introduced in Formula 1 in 2014 and was a big part of what gave them such an advantage in the power unit department over the other teams at the time. When you have a turbo, you also have turbo lag. It's unavoidable. This is why most turbo engines make almost all of their power at the top of the rev range, because that's where the turbo is spooling the fastest and making the most boost. But at low speeds and low revs, that boost isn't there. What the MGUH does is attach a very powerful motor, over 120 horsepower, to the turbo and compressor shaft to always keep it spinning at high speed, eliminating turbo lag. All of the teams had this, but what Mercedes did in 2014 that was so special is they split their turbo. They put the compressor turbine at the front of the engine and the exhaust turbine at the rear of the engine. In doing so, they were able to place that big, heavy MGUH right in between the cylinder banks. This allowed a much tighter engine package, allowed them to use shorter intake piping, and it also reduced the amount of heat from exhaust gases that bled into the compressor, which allowed for a smaller intercooler. This was a huge advantage for the team in 2014. And Mercedes carried this same technology over to the AMG1, which is amazing. And even though Mercedes have done an incredible job getting the AMG1 to where it is today, it would still make the Cybertruck look reliable. The engine only has a lifespan of 31,000 kilometers, which is about 18,000 miles. I mean, Mercedes-Benz makes cars that have service intervals longer than 18,000 miles. When Chris Harris was filming with the AMG1 for a Top Gear segment, the car would only make it a couple of laps before the engine completely died going into a braking zone. And then after the mechanics couldn't figure out how to fix it, they would pull out another AMG1, but then that one broke too. And according to AMG themselves, according to the unique characteristics of the F1 powertrain, Train, the car can't even legally be sold in the United States. The people who have driven it say that it provides an experience that is unmatched by anything else, and it's easy to see why. The fact that this car exists, even with its problems, is incredible. Unnecessary, but awesome. I mean, it's an F1 V6 hybrid that makes over a thousand horsepower and revs over 10,000 RPM. Come on, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.